ahead and start. So tonight we've got a couple of customer service items um, on, I almost call it a menu, on the agenda. Thank you. thinking food. It's okay. I was. I mean, all the, all, yeah. Um, so Abby is going to talk to us tonight um, about sort of a, a customer bill, bill payment timeline. You know, because what we hear a lot as board members, uh, well, we hear a lot, right? And, and you know, we, we hear that we hear, you know, there are folks that, that struggle to pay their bills. There just are. And, um, you know, we, we, you know, have a, a, a decent-sized um, portion of our customer base that struggles to pay their BPU bill. And we've gone back and forth on this as a board, you know, is like, is our time frame too long that we, that we allow people, and Abby's going to speak to this, is it not, is it, should we shorten it to actually help the customer? Because if you, and I know it sounds terrible, if you disconnect it sooner, you cannot rack up more charges, right? And so it's a catch-22. And so I wanted Abby to kind of walk through that. I think you all have a flow chart that she has here, so yeah. I'm literally going to shut my mouth now. No, you're good. Thank you for the introduction. So everyone should have something that says customer billing cycle. Um, Everyone except Amber. Everyone except Amber. She, she was strategic in helping me put this together. So um, we wanted to, and I really want your feedback on this, because we'd like to put something on the website that also helps explain this and, and makes it easy to read. So you'll see it starts with your initial billing cycle. So one thing I wanted to start out with, because um, one thing I was explaining to Amber is, so utilities bill on cycle bills. Um, and so we have um, 21 cycles that we bill on. This was originally established because we would have meter readers that would go out and read the meters, and the meter reader could only do so many in a day. And so they would be grouped together by cycles and, and bring that information in. Um, even though we have uh, meters that automatically give us those reads today, we still have that cycle billing approach today. And so there's 21 billing cycles. Typically, a billing cycle, um, we, you know, perfect world would be 30 days, but not every month has the same number of days in it. So sometimes it could be 28 days, sometimes it could be 33 days. It just kind of depends. So it's never always 30 days. So this is, is very much a, a generalization, and I just wanted to kind of explain that first. So when we talk about your initial billing cycle, that could be different for everybody. So, of course, we capture the usage for that billing cycle. So we get information in every day on um, the, the usage that you have, but then we utilize all of that for your, your entire billing cycle to create your customer bill. So we're going to call that day one. Then on day 25 is when that bill is due. A few days after the bill is due, we do a courtesy reminder to follow up and let you know that your bill was due and you haven't paid it yet. That could be a phone call, that could be a text, um, but we'll send a reminder. At this point, if you have not made your payment, we're getting ready to bill your next billing cycle. So that's where we're going to go down to the green section. Again, your next billing cycle for your particular bill would start, and you're going to get that, that um, the, the bill will be sent to the customer. If you drop down, you'll see day 31, if that initial bill from up above has not been paid, you'll see that on that bill. And there'll be a disconnect notice letting you know that you still have to pay that first bill because it's not been paid. So now for some customers, not only do they have that first bill, but now they're receiving the second bill. And so they owe two bills um, because that first one hasn't been paid. If you continue on where the, the highlighted um, pictures down here, day 38, a custom, you'll get another notification letting you know that that first bill was not paid yet. So we're going to let you know, hey, either phone or text, we still need payment for that one. The night before a disconnect, if you're set up to receive text messages, we will text message you and let you know that's the, or I should say the day before, you'll have that. That is the last day that 
you can set up a payment arrangement. So if you're not able to pay that full bill and you need extra time, you need to make payments, whatever the situation may be, that's the last time you can set up that payment arrangement because the very next day when you're scheduled to be disconnected, it's going to be too late. And then as you see, if you go up back where the green arrows follow, that second bill is now due. And so that's where those cross over to where if, if that first bill is not paid, you might see that on a second one and it continues to balloon and, and go from there. Now, up in the corner, you'll see it excludes a couple of things. So if, the, if you send a payment that's insufficient funds, that's going to be a little bit different. If you're on flex pay, um, you don't get in the situation because you're prepaying for those. If you're already on a payment arrangement, that's not going to be, um, or a payment arrangement has been terminated. So this is just if you're going through the normal billing cycle and having those bills um, due at those particular dates. So curious, does that make sense? Is it easy to follow, easy to understand? What questions do you have about the process? And then any recommendations you have on the vis visualization of it? It's really busy, I know, but there's a lot of really good information. Like, for example, we want to make sure that customers understand that you have to set up that pay arrangement before the date you're scheduled to be disconnected. Yes? Um, two observations. One is that um, you've got 30 days to pay it, it looks like. Yes. And even if you don't pay it, you should have called in and made some arrangements because it's going to start again on the 31st day. That would be the, the ideal situation, yes. But that can be flexible. Sure. And and so they can call the 9190 number, whatever it was, mm -hmm. and make that arrangement. Um, the other thing was, is the cold weather situation still in effect? We do have if a... If it goes below 30, yes. can't be cut off. And that's a perfect example. So if we're in the cold weather rule, then those services would not be disconnected if, if applicable. Right. Okay, so, so then it continues to build even more. That the But it keeps running. Yes. The bill keeps running. Yes. And <laughs> my question always was, how does that get paid? I mean, if they can't pay it in 30 days and they let it run... Yeah. Three months, how will that get paid? And that's where we would like them to contact us to set a payment arrangement. So at least they're paying something if they can't pay the full amount because <clears throat> that continues to balloon. And so, and I've been in utilities over 20 years. This is not unique to BPU. This is Kansas Gas. This is West Star Energy where customers who are unable to pay don't set up those payment arrangements and they come out of cold weather, cold weather rule, with large balances that they they are struggling to get a hold of. Okay, let me ask one more question yes. here. At one time, uh, there was a uh, program in place, I believe through the state, that um, cold weather uh, conditions could have been uh, upgraded through the state and paid back through the BPU. The LEAP? Pardon? The LEAP? The LEAP program? Uh, yeah, I believe it was. Yeah, I believe yeah. that's what it's called. Uh, yeah. Yes, you have to qualify for those. And so has there been any uh, effort to begin that again? That's still going. So there are still LEAP funds, and you can apply for those every year. And if you qualify for those funds, then you would be allocated. Now. The LEAP funds are actually federal funds that are distributed to the state, and then the state determines the eligibility and delivers those. And so that could be applied to your bill. Um, it, it may or may not cover the entire amount, though. But it's a one-time payment, It's right? a one-time payment. That's correct. And so once that's been paid, that may cover a single so what, bill. What do you mean one-time? It's just one One, one, one payment per year. Or, yeah. One payment per year. One payment yep. per year per Your customer. funds. You get it once in the 12 month calendar. Yeah. You can't get it twice. But, but it, it may not have been a late leap program because it was not set up exactly the way that paid. Um, I know it was 
you had to go through the state and get a qualified contractor and, and do an evaluation on your house and determine where all the Weather leaks were at and and then apply to the BPU for that was the whole to get the approved contractor. Yeah. I'm sorry, Sadie. I don't think that's still going on anymore, mm -hmm. Carlos. No, I, I don't think it is. That's why I was thinking ago. that that seemed to work pretty well. A lot of these houses don't have insulation at right. all. I mean, you can see the curtains blowing. Well, I've, and there's been a in those federal houses. program, Norm, that they've put out that's going to, it'll work similar to that program, uh -huh. and it'll so pay up to $14,000 per home to, you know, toward weatherization efforts. That money has not funneled its way through to the state yet. And why is uh, that? This has been out there for two years. I think it was part of, it's either part of the Inflation Reduction Act. All right. mm -hmm. There you go. Well, I, I think, it, <clears throat> to me, it's it's closing the barn door after the animals are gone. Right. You know, if we can do something up front, insulation of the house some kind of way, makes a lot more sense to me. Sure. That could definitely I mean, the, the object is to be efficient with the the power. This this way is not going to fix anything. It just keeps going. The hole gets deeper and deeper. I you know, Norm, a lot of those programs come out, and they're a reimbursement type of program, which is another problem. It's earmarked for a great use of something to do with upgrading your home. But if the customer has to spend the money themselves up front, they're never going to get it because they don't have the money to yeah. spend it in the first place. So that's some of the things we argue about when we go talk to the the representatives in Topeka and in D.C. about how they can help our community better. Yeah. So you know, make it easier accessible for the end user, not the utility company, but for the end user. Well, one, one other thing is to educate the homeowner. I mean, some of them have no idea. Some of them have no idea. Uh, I personally have talked to a couple people, but homeowners that had was using 30,000 gallons of water a month. And you know why? Because the husband smoked, and he throwed the butts in the, to in the stool, and they had one of the old six gallon stools. That is just crazy. I mean that's that's a, that's a simple fix. I, I the wife her chin was on the table. I said, No, this is what this is what your bill is. So the education is a part of this thing. Sure. Absolutely. Back to the this is not a this is not this is a complicated issue really. It's more than just paying the bill. Sure. Yeah. I'm I'm sorry. No no no. You you've been saying this. You, you're saying the same thing I've said since I from day one that I came here. The homes they they need to be more energy efficient. Yeah. First of all, so that we can help with these things. But also with like lease, is it just it's just for a pocket part of the year? Is that still how it is or whatever? And see yeah. that's why I'm confused too because um, I'm also on Mackling Sports. I heat over the Missouri side. Yes. And they can, I mean, and not that it's perfect either, and they have limited funds who they can help, and it's still based on your income, but they can help different times, whereas LEAP is just spring, whenever it is, that little pocket of time, is it like two months? I mean, it's something ridiculous. Yeah. Am I making that up? Am I no, no. January through March. Right. Yeah. Right. Something, right. Yeah. And that's it. So and if you don't get them at that time, if you don't qualify by that time, and then it's only going to be a set amount of pocket that they um, amount of money that they've allowed, like whatever the dollar amount is. So right. It doesn't cover, so it does help, but you still got to qualify for that. You still got to go and apply for it, and you got to qualify for it. And then yeah, so it helps some, but like you said, after these days, if they've been on this and they haven't been shut off, and the bill's going up, and that's when I you hear in the folks that have thousands and thousands right. of dollars, and that's how it gets that high. Because a lot of people are like, how does it get that high, you know? And yeah. that's why. Right, yeah. So I just wish there were uh, another way, to yeah. your point, that once it does happen, there was a, a funnel that happened. The world doesn't 
happened between January and March. No, and, and you know, one, so one thing, um, well, a couple of things, right? So BPU has two different um, funds. You know, it has two different utility assistance funds. And um, those are also one-time funds out of each. They're based on need, right? Some is hardship, some is economics, but they're based on need. The last two years, so going into 2024 and going into 2023, um, the board has a $500,000 allocation for economic development every year. And that money, since I've been on the board, which has you know, just been just, just over four years, the entirety of that $500,000 it's never used, okay? It's not used. I, you would think it would be. It isn't. So, and, and I will tell you that, and Carlos, you can speak to this much better than I can, it's not because, you know, we turn a bunch of projects away. People don't come and ask for the money. I mean, what do you see, maybe two applications a year, maybe? Yeah. And sometimes they'll ask for like $1.7 million. Yeah, that's not what's in the fund. So, I'm sorry, what now? Right? So, that's, and not that we, I mean, so you still try to help the project if they are, if they benefit the community, right? I mean, that's sort of one of the guidelines I think we look for. So, so the, the last two budget years, we've had $225,000, $250,000, $400,000 left in those funds. I mean, it's, be, it's been between, I think, two fifty dollars and 400000 And we have, the board has, out, you know, has, has authorized transfer of that over into our utility assistance fund. Okay, and I don't know where we sit right now. I don't know if you guys probably don't have those numbers right. Hey. Sorry. You do? I, I, was, like, I, I was like, she's way better. Than I <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I don't. <laughs> um, but, but we had, you know, and, and we, a, a big portion of that is, um, um, you know, it goes through the United Way. They, they manage that program for BPU. And a lot of people complain about that. Right, a lot of consumers that we hear from complain about that, why they take theirs off the top or whatever. By the same token, it used to be handled inside BPU. You may know that better than I do. And we had people complaining. It's like, oh, well, then it's just that's your friends that gets the money. I mean, you got to have a third party do it. You have to. And so they came and gave us a report mid-year this year, and it's very impressive. We put all this money back in to try to help consumers that need utility assistance. And just back of the cereal box math, we help 600 homes. That's it. I mean, it's a lot, but it's, you know, I had to tell the guy, I said, I appreciate that, but 600 homes not a lot. Of and homes. at what rate? Well, and it just, and it's, what was the average was? Uh, three, 200? Yeah, it was like between two and 300. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't a ton. And it, it's the same situation where people aren't asking for it. Like, there's funds there, there's money there. In fact, um, United Way's asking, like, what else can they do? Because people we, aren't coming to get the money. We just had this conversation yeah. this morning on how to get people to utilize mm -hmm. funds. But it's just, I, I'm going, again, I'm going back to, um, I know a little bit more on the Missouri side or whatever, but I do know that those water companies, those other companies, energy, I mean, all of them over there, they are working with MacLean to make sure that people know about this money that they have and know where to go. They even have, you know, set up where staff. Well, it's the United Way of Greater Kansas City. Can they know? Can they not get with Mac? I mean, I, I don't know because I don't I'm know not. What, I'm just saying, but I'm just saying, but those utility companies are the ones that are leading the charge as well. MacLink's doing their part and they're sharing. Everybody knows that, and all the agencies, supporting agencies, know about MacLink is what I'm saying. And maybe they don't know enough about United Way, or maybe it's just too cumbersome, or maybe the money, by the time you go through it, it's still, you know, you're talking two or $300 when you got a bill or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm not making excuses for what I'm saying. Sure. I, I know for a fact because several of them sit on the board with me, mm -hmm. and they are actively working with MAC. They're act actively having days and opportunities for people to come to those locations mm -hmm. that's accessible to them, and then they know about it. They need help filling, you know, and that application process, that's another barrier. The application process, it's a, it, yeah, it's a bear. Yeah. And so they have people that are helping them fill that out. So I'm just saying that's just our neighbors, just because I just, 
I'm privy to a little bit of that sure. because of what I'm doing. And I'm telling you, and it's still not perfect, but they do have, but they have more money. Missouri has a lot more money. So in Kansas, no, but please. What is Max stand for? Uh, Mid American Assistance Coalition. Yeah, and so they've done a few different things, but they took over the light heap after I think United Services or whoever it was that had it back in the day um, and everything. But I'm just saying, I'm that, that is what I see, and I'm just like, I'm, I'm not, we just got to do everything that we can do, and I don't know what that is. So I don't know what that is when you're putting out your information, like contact, you know, because we talk about 311 and then we talk about 211 and all those things, but if we have to access to the Greater Kansas City United Way and, you know, that we need to funnel that, we need to make sure that we're reminding all of these agencies that we have that, that are providing emergency assistance in Wyandotte County that that is that available. Yeah, maybe and, United Way needs to be yeah, uh, right. doing a little bit more. Well, maybe, and maybe, uh, do you know who's running that over there? Getting them in here next week. It'll be the so winter. LIHEAP is run. Is in Kansas, LIHEAP is run through DCS. Right? They, and they get so much money. Kansas is run through DCS. Does it change ever, or is it just the same amount? Yeah. They advocate and they, they, they and lobby. And that goes to the United Way. No, that goes to MacLink. So MacLink is the LIHEAP program. And Mac shares the money? Yes. But the saying, but and, actually and the population knows about and speaking right now. So to make sure that every effort is being made so they can get that, that money. And it's still they're still not getting everyone, but at least they're going out and making that effort because these, these utility companies are saying, you know Max what, I want out. Right. And yeah, they're, they, they're working with the utility yeah. companies. But even at five hundred thousand dollars, I mean and, and she would have a better number for you than I would, but at any given time, we it's have a high not. number of people eligible for disconnect. I'd say between 4,500 and 6,000 people at any given time. How many? Probably between 4,500 and 6,000. I can just, believe that. Depending on the different times of the year and things. Right. Uh, but it's still the dollar amount. And what you're talking about. The Band-Aid. So, so knowing that number, $500,000, if if the average health is 250, that's only 2,000 people. Thank you. So. And that's my point and everything. And even with, with the money on the Missouri side, they have all this money, but they, the, they're still limiting how much they can use. They have this pile of money, and, they, and they, they do have a surplus every year because the state is still only authorizing them to help so many families oh, at a state? certain dollar amount. It had to go through the state, Yeah. Too? Well, the state is the, that part of the, the money is funneled through the state. Yeah, okay. Through, yeah. But uh, my point is, though, we just got to make every – you know, effort available because, like, if you call Catholic charities, if you call such and such, they're going to say we don't have any funds or whatever. So, and then again, in whoever is, uh, I don't know who's, uh, what system they're going on at United Way anymore, but, you know, still, you still maybe only use one time, you know, in United Way, and you're talking still $200, $300. That's not going to help somebody with thousands of dollars. No. And, and one one other thing we're not even thinking about. We're thinking about cold weather. This could happen in hot weather as oh, well. Oh yeah. Oh absolutely. I this mean, happens. Kind too. of a yearly yeah. thing. It's yeah. Not, my point about leat is only from January to March. Right. But what is going to happen when we when we're in yeah. the heat of the summer? Because the same situation is happening. At minimum, they should be doing it twice a year. If they can't do anything else in the in, in the end of the um, winter months, and then maybe at the end of the summer um, the summer months to even make a dent. But that would help. So I know Evergy has dedicated, they call customer advisors, to no. go out and help customers fill out the LEAF application, go out and home. they reach out to different organizations to try to connect them with the assistance they need. So they have a dedicated team to, that do. does that. They do. Yes. It is Ever Evergy, too. Is, what's the other group that's over there? Fire. Yeah, fire, fire does. What's the other one? Atmos. Atmos. Yeah, Kansas I mean, Gas used to have a couple people. So, yeah, they usually have dedicated teams to help find those funds. I know when I was at Westar, there was a team, and so if you had already used LEAP and, and there was a special need, they could reach out to those organizations and find those funds. So I don't know how we fix that or whatever, but if there is money still left over, right away, shame on them. Yeah. Because they should have, I mean, because they, people are calling 211, and they're saying, I need help with utilities. So that should be the first line of defense. They should be 
uh, you know, if they qualify for those funds, they should be allowed to have it. So I think you're, to your point, I think it's it's, it's worth the conversation. It's, 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 it's the process and yeah. 600 people right. in the metro. I mean, you know, when we have how many people here, and if we stick with your 45, yeah. you know, 45K, and think about that still, we got 600, and then you're talking two to 300, mm-hmm. do the math. And it's the people, it's, they have the, ex, there's funds there available, and people are not reaching out to get those funds. Either um, they don't know how, they don't know it's there, they don't want to, um, because then when you do reach out, you have to provide information, no. and, no. and I know sometimes, a lot of times, people don't want to do that. And those no. arms are cumbersome, yes. and they have to, and then like you said, and if it's going to be a one-time deal, I think a lot of people are saying, like, do I want to? Is it worth it? Right. There? Is right. It worth it? You know, I may really need them another time. So it's like a game. So yeah. We've talked before too. I mean, the process is arduous, but some of the some of the programs only answer the phone certain days of the week. They don't. They're not even available to mm-hmm. them. It, you know, they don't care what the schedule is. If they don't answer the phone on Wednesday, they don't answer the phone on Wednesday. Right. That was a complaint of one of the customers who came to our last meeting. Yeah. I don't want to give all. All my I know my exactly. It happens. I know a lot of times they're like wanting to, you know, but it's just like it's a service and there's a need or whatever. I just want every available made opportunity made available that people are really needing them. They can access the funds in the best possible way. And I mean, I and I do agree. I think having a third party, but you know, with a third party, you still got to deal with some of their policies and procedures as well. Right. So all I'm saying is it may be worth a conversation to find out what can they do to share in that moment. I just can't imagine that money's left on the table when we have two one one. Take I, away everything else. We still have two one one. I still think this is reactive. We 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 need to take this proactive some way. Uh, help them with their house, you know. Insulate their house some kind of way, a new door, a new well, window, you know, something. Well, some of that's happening. Some of that's happening. They, they have some funding. I know that can probably share a little bit more about that. But, you know, with the different WC, they're, they're providing certain services for that. And then you have, um, you know, Commissioner Bynum, her group over there. You know, they, they so. But, again, you have to be a certain, certain demographic. And you've got to have certain income guidelines to even qualify right. for those programs. And then they're going to determine what they are going to help you fix and what they can based on that money. You may know. You can probably share better than I can. I mean, within weeks. Yeah. Right. Um, she's pointing at me because I work at community development. <laughs> <laughs> and we have grant. We're grant funded. <laughs> and like she said, with grant funds, there are stipulations as far as income. And mm-hmm. uh, you got to be up to date. What, what, what is the income? Bottom line, um, fifteen thousand. It's usually percent of poverty. Uh, uh, yeah, it's on the federal poverty, poverty level. Yeah. Five people in the house. Yeah, yeah. I mean, income? I don't know the income by heart. I'm sorry, <laughs> but it's based on the on the guidelines. Is it based right. on Homestead and the state statute? Because I think that's thirty seven five is what it is now. Typically, what they do is make it percent over the poverty level. Right. right. Right, hundred fifty percent. Right, which right. is how some of the other programs over at the UG program, exactly the yeah. utility assistance program or relief, I guess. Oh, okay, that's in there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so here, here's a comment about your customer service. Yeah. I was. It's not bad, I, but, but I, I was sitting in my house in <laughs> August, and power went off. So I checked for the outage thing, and there's no outage. So I call and they said, well, your bill's 20 days delinquent. Mm. Okay, so I went back and I said, all right, I wrote, I, old school, I paid my check, right? Okay. Good. I wrote a check. I dropped it in the mail on July 23rd. Okay. Mm. That check has still never surfaced anywhere. Mm. Oh, USPS. Yes. That so, so I called and I said, no, 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 I paid. Da, 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 da. Anyway, they were really helpful. I got bounced a couple of places, but yeah. they said, well, you owe, so I owe like this, the last month and the current month. Right. So fortunately, I was able to just put it on my credit card, and so I just pay it, and literally within 10 minutes, my power was back on. Yeah. So I should have done this previously. I went to the portal thing, and I set up my uh, BPU portal thing, and now I get 
my bills by you know email and right. Yay. It'll take care of that. Good but, job. Yeah, I'm yeah, a I should have appreciate done it, you. But I got no advance notice. But I didn't have a text thing. I didn't have it. It was my fault. But I just want to say that you know, <laughs> customer service stuff was really good once once the power went off. And I was, was like, that this year? Huh? Was that this year? Yeah, that was just uh, August. That happened. I, I remember I went back to, I wrote the check July 23rd and I mailed it at the downtown post office that day. <laughs> it still never surfaced. Anymore. I, I think uh, my mom sent me my birthday card in July. I didn't get it until. Wow. Yeah. Well, USP actually got some problems. I'm sure they had problems with the post office. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's a staffing thing for them or, or what. I, yeah. But anyway, I guess my point was um, I could afford to pay. So it wasn't right. the same thing they were talking about. But I was able to do it. Now I'm like all online with portal thing, which is pretty cool. I, mean, I know I, I said it last meeting. I'll say it again. When you're talking to folks out there and they have to deal with us, it's just imperative that we have the most up-to-date contact information we mm -hmm. can get because we've invested in all these ways to push information out, right. the text messaging, emailing, the paperless bills, different things. <clears throat> but if we don't have good contact information, right. I and, and that was my fault because I realized that what was in there was an old phone number, not oh, the wow. current phone number. So it was a, lot of, a lot of customers we've had for a long time, you know, they have a landline list in there. Right. They, they don't even have anymore. You know, um, that was that was my case. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. So anyway, that's that's all up to date. But I will say, the customers. Good. And good. in fact, when I told my sob story, they even said, "Well, we're going to waive the late fee." Oh, very nice. Just because I paid it. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but here's a question that I have about with the billing cycle. Yeah. So what if I can pay part of the bill? Mm -hmm. I pay enough that covers my electric and water, but not storm sewer, pilot, trash. <laughs> Same question. I, I think uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's a loaded question. <laughs> We're not going to take that question tonight, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There I think it's there has to be some communication. Yeah. I don't know why. There's just a long ways over there that ivory tower. It's not that far. So, Carlos, I think you were going to throw in uh, something on the proactive side that, uh, Norm, you were talking about. About weatherization, inter uh, getting ahead of the, the, you know, the problem before it starts. Uh, BP rolled out a, a program with Habitat for Humanity earlier this year called the RAP program, Weatherization Relief. RAP? Yes. Now, when we rolled that out, we, uh, Habitat for Humanity, we, we narrowed it down from what areas most needed based on, you know, their billing, uh, their income, and we sent that, sent that list over to Habitat for Humanity. They sent, they sent out this, the information to the customers, no response. I think we, we had five, or, five to ten within the first two or three months. So B, BPU sends out a letter uh, to them. It, 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 it's because I go out and I do the energy efficiency weatherization. If someone calls and says there's a high bill, uh, usually it hits my phone and I and I go out personally and see what we can do uh, to lower that bill. Oh, good uh, and uh, and it, it's heartbreaking to see that we cannot connect with the community when we do have this money. We have uh, uh, enough funds in the budget right now for at least 125 uh, families. Uh, and BPU is offering $2,000 worth of, of uh, uh, insulation, windows, and then if it goes over that, Habitat for Humanity is putting in some uh, 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 the extra money. And there's been a couple of families in one county that has taken advantage of it, but not enough. So when I do get these calls, uh, hey, I, I roll them over to Habitat. Even though they're not on the list, the 100 people that we have tried to get get a hold of in the last six months, uh, we're going, okay, you know, Mrs. Johnson here, or Mr. Smith, they really need this this help. And, and and a lot of times I can streamline it to them just by going out there saying, hey, they're right, they, they do need some help. Uh, and so when it comes to energy efficiency or uh, the utility trying to reach our commu our customers, um, I can sit here and tell you firsthand, we do. I, I do try to make it out there to each and every customer and uh, help them do energy efficiency, weatherization, 
So you have to you have to confirm that they need it, uh, or the the entity that has the money gives it up. Well, well, they're, they're already on a list. They've already been picked. There's already been a a uh, hundred names on the list that you have. You've already you've already qualified. All you have to do is fill it out. Fill out the uh, the application. Sometimes they don't have email. They don't do. They don't have the computers. Uh, I've I've went so far as to go out there and help them uh, fill it out. Yeah. yeah. They get discouraged because there's it's it's a lot of paperwork. And, yeah. In reality, it's not. When you start looking through it, it's not as much information that you need. But when you get uh, some of our community that are up in age that are not, uh, you know, computer savvy, they, they just get discouraged, and I try to convince them it's not that big of a deal. We, we can walk you through this process. So, yeah. Um, but if, if someone does call and go, hey, you know, my bill is X, Y, Z, I can, I can see exactly what, how many kilowatts you're using a month and how many people live in the home. And if, if there's a red flag, they're going, yeah, there is something going on here. We need to figure out what's, what's causing that bill. And, and 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 usually we can get to the bottom line of what's going on there and lead them, lead them to the right uh, uh, source of help if they contact, if they contact us or contact me. In Habitat with that RAP program, their original model was to select a, a community and work within that community. So if they're going to go over to Douglas Sumner or my community <laughs> or whatever, you know, and then they will work in that community and everyone that qualify in that community and everything. Then you got the Douglas Summer Neighborhood Association that's backing them and saying this is a good program. Let them in. So I think that may be a problem because I don't know where these. I know you you pick the people and they may be ready, but where's that other backup to say? Because we went on a tour and we went over to see those habitat homes and those communities where they did that kind of work over in Missouri. We did all of that. Um, and so I'm just saying that you know I think that habitat should have advocated more for what the, how they're doing it over in Missouri because I think that model worked best because they can go and look at you can go for you know for blocks and you can see where the work that's been done in this particular neighborhood they have a much more robust uh, home reservation in Missouri than in Kent because their state legislation works right right you know, works but but still but they're still working with habitat though but they're working with this program is working with habitat is what I'm saying oh. But I'm saying that they could take that mentality and go through. So if we picked whatever, Northeast, or we go over here to Avondale, whatever we go, I'm just saying I think that might be a better approach. You're going to see a lot of bang for your buck because you've got to know a general area where the utilities are being excessive. I just wish that Habitat would have, would have advocated more for that model versus the scatter site, yeah. if that makes sense. It does. I mean, strategically, you have to start with one of those neighborhoods in order to gain trust. Right, that's what it's... show the before and after, so you have to start small and then let it blossom out from there. You're 100% right. And they know how to do that because they've done it. They've, they've done it over on the Missouri side, Habitat for Humanity. So, and we're all in Habitat and, here. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Mike, I can't remember his last name, Ralph. Brandon. What's his name? Brennan. I do believe so. Mike Brennan? Yeah. Was. I'll tell you in a minute. Well, they've changed their folks so much. And after they left the bottoms and now they're over in Missouri, I know that I know one of the good people that, that does the volunteer stuff. But There has been some changes in Habitat for Manny to worry. It slowed down this process, and we've been, yeah. we've been trying to push and going, okay, where are we at? What's the list look like? Yeah. Who's on it? Who should we put on it? So. Yeah, Ken is my contact over all the volunteers and the and the different uh, restores and stuff like that, and he helps with coordinate all that kind of stuff. So he's my contact at Habitat. Who is it? Ken. His name is Ken. So, so do we think we would have a better um, maybe approach? And nothing against Habitat, but if we can't we can't get it right, you know, on on the KCK side, like we have on the KC Mo side. You know, do we do we partner with another organization? I mean, I mean, do you put community housing in Wyandotte County in there? But we're already doing that. They're already doing it. CWC's already doing it. But we're not doing it with them. But they're already doing it with other funds through, you know, for the unified government. I think it got to give some funding to CWC and Brendan and all that group over there. To build houses. But you but don't give them the weather. Yeah, they don't do weatherization. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But they they do have funding for that, though. They do have funding for that. 
Okay. And again, it's a process. Wait a minute, aren't you they on want your income taxes. You have to provide your income taxes. It's a lot of. They also, um, yeah, it's a lot of exposure. I understand, but like you said, when the people are elderly, though, and you got a lot going on, you have to understand there's a lot of trust issues there in Wyandotte County. So first of all, to let really? somebody even come to your house, to have someone come to your house, that's what I'm saying. You need to have someone like that. Or the process is so they, like I said, the different groups have funding and they are trying to do these things or whatever, but it's still not enough. And they're still based on, they're income-based. A lot of what CHWC does, too, is provide low or no interest loans once you meet the qualifications. Yeah, they do that, too. They, they from a resource standpoint, they don't have really the team to go do any more work themselves. Mm -hmm. They, because of how much they've grown, how much they're taking care of of what they already own. Right. But they do have a number of really great programs that I think go underutilized. And like I said, they're not the only one, you know. And so I just, to your point, I don't, I don't, I don't think that, yeah, I don't, I don't want to speak for Brendan, but you may be able to go over there and, <laughs> and have. Oh, no, that's, thing, but, no, yeah. I mean, you're a lot closer to this than certainly. No, I, I think Habitat, I think, I mean, that's their business. That's what they do, and they do it, they do it very well. So I don't think I, I just think that again more strategic if they would have selected a neighborhood, got the neighborhood association behind it, identified the families of the greatest need, had a time when we sat down and helped them fill out those applications. If there were any barriers to help have an application day, it would it it could be done. Mm -hmm. Is all I'm saying. So it's, there's always I mean I just I refuse to think that when there's money out there and families are in need, there's more than one way to handle that. Yeah. And I know we don't have time. You don't have time to go to all these families, you know, to these houses to, to fill out that paperwork. So one thing we got to do, we got to figure out something, you know, it's just like the school district. Nobody wants to, they don't want to talk to each other, and then you had to go fill out this form, and you already got free to reduce lunch. So, okay, you qualify. If you qualify for free to reduce lunch, you should qualify for some of these other programs. And it's almost like, you know, if you qualify, if your skills are really extremely high and you're at this income gap, Maybe you qualify. I don't know, but I'm just saying we got to remove some of these unnecessary barriers. Is all I'm asking. Yeah, if amen. We can do that. Oh. Yeah, people don't want to. People don't want to expose themselves and say they're poor, <laughs> or I don't know how. I mean, this is a word salad here that we we in here might know. Talk about kilowatts and cubic feet and all that kind of thing. We might know about that, but a lot of people don't know this. It's on the bill. I know it's on the bill. It's on the back side, but people don't know what that is. You know, it, they just don't know. And maybe all the people that are doing this kind of work, you know, maybe you all need to get together and and have a powwow and say how. Can I think you Carlos ought to get on it. You know, get on a good right, horse and, and, well, I, and run, run, run. Right. I mean, I think you're spot on on that. And I think the good news is, is you know, I've already shouted their praises, mm -hmm. and but but they're here at this meeting. They're hearing this, right? right. Both Taking of notes. Them. And they're doing enough, so they can be like, excuse me, I mean, oh, yeah. I'll apologize later. <laughs> well, but I mean, well, that's but, right. you know, and they're talking about, you know, hey, there's new ways to do things. Well, including BPU, there's new ways to do things, right? And maybe we get that conversation going with folks because if, if there's money out there that's not being utilized, that's a problem. That hurts my heart. Yeah. Yeah. As a person that has been in this fight for the entire 24 yeah. years I've been here, I mean, you know, I mean, Pastor Wake knows. He knows my. He knows. He knows me more. I've known Mike for years because of his UG stuff back here. But you know, we just gotta. We can't leave money on the table when there when there are people that can utilize this money. And I'm with you 100%, Norm. From day one, you know, you've heard me say that. Until we get these houses up to code so they can be more energy efficient, we're always going to have excessive. We're going to have excessive That's deals. So, being proactive. But now we're having funding. So I'm saying, if it's a hundred, let, let's tout that hundred, and then maybe some other funder would say, you know what, I can bring in more money so we can get another hundred done. But let, let let's be very strategic in how we do it. And so that we can make the greatest impact, so people will want to be involved. Um, especially after Rose moved to uh, give more money to uh, the uh, those who need help with utilities. I mean, this was uh, something that was done uh, for this this year's budget. Well, and the last so, two budgets, we talked about that a little yeah, bit earlier, yeah, and yeah. I mean, it's it's unheard of the amount of money we're giving. But what we're hearing now is United Way is saying we have the money. 
Nobody's, nobody's, you know, requesting. nobody's coming. Minimal applicants. People are not applying for it or, or wanting to, to to try and get it. So making it, we need well, and, and maybe we need to change because we actually control how that money goes out. Yeah. And maybe we need to change. Right. You know, I don't know what criteria. I'd have to look and see what criteria we put on that money. Mm-hmm. We we do put criteria on on both yeah. both funds. I think it's cyclical too. Is you know if you can only get it once a year. That's right. The bulk of them taking it for that winter charge. So you see this ramp up when mm-hmm. that time comes. Sure. Mm-hmm. And then you see that smoothing effect when it when that time's not there. So and does that, there's got to be a way to offset that. Too, yeah. You know, can they get that money through United Way? Also get leaked. Right. Yeah, they can. Well, and I'm not going to get on my soapbox about universal service for utilities, but right. we absolutely need to have that in this country because we mm-hmm. folks are drowning. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, I digress. So I think we were talking about this, and I know we were looking for input, and we went off on a really wide tangent um, about this. So that's okay. This could is- you guys have any other? thoughts on I mean I know this is just in front of you and if you guys want to you know take it read it yep. you know a, a yes yeah. yes ma'am yes about um on the top row there yeah where the payment is due and then is it like the next day you get charged a late fee it's actually two days before the, the late fee is assessed is is that a I've been paying my bill on time and I could have waited two days no is that a BPU thing, or I mean, is that a is that a BPU policy? A lot of other things give you more of a grace period before being charged a late fee. You know, and I hear this a lot. And so my day job, I work for a company that sells broadband, sells internet, right? You know how much we give? Zero. You didn't pay it today, you're off tomorrow. And it sounds terrible. I mean, it's and I'm like I. Unfortunately, I'm in a position with the company where I have to deal with that, with with consumers, right? Um, but it, that is that is what we do. For our two-day wait, fifty percent of that is a tie into technology uh, technology limitations. So yeah. Uh, Thank God. What happens for us is customer service assessed the, the next day and then logs it on. Thank you for that clarification, Thanks. Rob. Thanks. Wow. Yes. So because of our system limitations, it's safe. <laughs> well, I guess the question is, is it, yeah. It's a system limitation that we've never seen a reason to go after. So yeah. Right. 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 Well, but I think what they're yeah, talking about is elongating. We have, we have other they're talking about elongating that time period, right? right? Well, but I and I think. Really could do that as well. But I, but so, and I think the point. I mean, the point of, you know. I guess putting this out there is, I mean, you guys can see the length of time, right, there actually is between usage starts, payment due, disconnect somewhere down here. But, I mean, there's there's a pretty long period yeah. of time there. And, you know, we, we've had that we talked about at the front end. I mean, we struggle with, is it too long? Is it too short? And, I mean, because you go a long ways before you get to disconnection, right, on this whole path. You're a long way yeah. before you get to disconnection. You're day 45, is that right? Approximately, yeah. 45. I mean, and so. You may not get disconnected on day 45. And that's the thing. It's, it's a it's, function of the system, right? Well, so we, we talked about 45, 6,000 people sitting in there. We can't disconnect all those people on one day. They can't because we only have so many people answering the phone and process all the free yeah. payments. So I think typically what happens is, we disconnect somewhere in the neighborhood of 250 or so yeah. people a day. So if you're lucky or unlucky enough to get stuck in that flow, yeah. right. you can keep digging that hole yeah. even past the 45. And and what we would really like is if you're not able to make that first you know that first payment to call and set up that payment arrangement early because even if you can't make pay the full bill at least you can you can start making some partial payments or we can convert you to flex pay or something like that so you don't get in that hole but that unfortunately is what happens too often so the flex pay um, if they are 
can you be placed in that? Yep. Even if yeah. you haven't, what's the one, what do you call it? I call it FlexPlay or the when they do the bill for the 12 months. Oh, that's the payment plan. Well, payment plan. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. So, so that's where they just kind of average your right. bill. The, the, but if you're in arrears, I don't think you could get on equal you payment. Can't. Mm -hmm. you no. have to be different. Yeah, you have to get in your residence. For, I'm, I, I got this down. Come on. Yes. But okay. okay. Well, Come on. Well, you have to be there 12 months. Right. You have to right. be behind. Right. And they'll put it on there. And then they'll, but they're basing it on <coughs> last year. That's right. Because that's what they have. But then right. they do come and reassess it. So they do kind of that's right. do a yes. calibration. Yes. Throughout, and I don't know if that's once or twice a year. Or is it twice, twice every six months. Every <laughs> twice a year. Yes. Yeah, they every recalibrate year. that. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm a big fan of, I, I promote that all the time. Yeah. Well, you know how much. Folks budget. Because you, you know, yeah. how, that's what I tell I don't know how sure. people. Take the volatility out of the monthly equation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know how people do not do it. Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. Too. Yeah. Depending on where your sample size is, you're going to It does make a difference. And it, yeah, it depends on your usage. But, but yeah. on the flex pay, so that is it's basically a prepay, so you never build up those arrears. So you would get reminders that hey, you know, you can then you can say, Okay, I'm gonna put fifty dollars down or I'm gonna put a hundred dollars down or I got paid, so now I'm gonna put money down and so you're not confined to our cycle billing, you're not confined to our cycle due date, because that's sometimes a lot of time it's when it's due. You can put that money down ahead of time, and if you are in arrears, then 25% of what you put down goes towards the arrears, where the other 75% goes to the, the future. And so that's an option for people if, if they get in a situation and, and the, that allows them to kind of manage the usage, manage the money in the way they do best. Kind of what Mike was saying a little bit earlier, and then you were at Kansas Gas. Yes. So Kansas Gas, at any given time, I have a $500 credit. They won't let me go past 500 mm -hmm. but they let me have a $500, I have a $500 credit at any given time. <coughs> but you can't do that with BPU, even if you're on, because I'm on this, on the, I'm, I'm going to call it level pay, because that's, yes. that's what I call it way back in the day, Yeah. and everything. And so if I pay on there, they're not going to, it's not necessarily paying down, they're like, looking at it as it's paying or whatever, because I even asked, I said, well, what if I look at the bill, like, what is my balance? So if my balance right now is $700, so if I pay that $700 right now, and then you'll start me back, at, you know, you'll recalibrate me or whatever, but no, they really couldn't articulate that if they could do that to kind of level me out and then let me pay so that I, I don't know. that It wasn't like it, the way it was explained to me, it wasn't really a benefit to do that. To pay, like, pay the whole balance. Like, because you know how you're on level pay, you have your, what your monthly payment, what they're saying, assessed, and then it's, it may be a little bit more or yeah. whatever, depends on where you are in that cycle that that gentleman's talking about when you came in or whatever. But if I know that I have a $700 balance, but, I mean, you know, in that, in, you know, for that cap, and for me to pay that $700 or whatever, and then what would be my payments for the rest of the the rest of the month, and they, they really couldn't give me a good answer on that. If you're on, are you talking about if you're on the equal pay or the Yeah, I'm on the pay. equal pay, and I pay, I pay the same amount every month, but there's still a balance because right. you still don't pay because it's not quite enough to that what, what your total is due. So you're always at a, a little slight deficit until you, until they recalibrate you and then get you kind of even out. And it, it will depend on your usage, obviously, too. You know, right. if it's a hot year or, or a cooler year. I mean, right. it, the, the usage can go up and down. Because I I've, I've was a, I'm a strong believer in the average pay when I was, I, I moved here from Topeka and I had West, well, Evergy and Kansas Gas and everything separate. And, you know, sometimes you see those averages go up, sometimes you see those averages go down. And so it just, it it depends on the usage. Yeah, I just wonder. It's just amazing how you can do things differently and different. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. But yeah, that the flex pay for anyone who isn't aware just allows someone to pr basically prepay and, and manage their usage and their money that works best for them, so they don't get in arrears so deep and so far behind. So that is an option that we offer our customers. And you still gotta have money for that, though. Well, you do. You prepay. So, but then you don't have. You don't get that surprise bill at the. You know. Whenever your bill is due, you don't get that surprise bill that's you know five hundred, seven hundred dollars, or whatever like that, because you're you're adding money ahead of time to it, so you're prepaying for that um, before you get into arrears, and so you never get into that arrears um, piece of owing owing this money and having you know to to be behind.
And that's a, that is, unless it's been changed with Evergy. So when I was at Webstar, Webstar got permission to do a pilot program, a prepay pilot program from the KCC since they're uh, regulated under the KCC. So they did that pilot program, and then that was dissolved. So to my knowledge, that is not something that um, Evergy currently offers. I think the graphic is easy to understand. Okay, good. Um, it's like we're going to bring it back to the graphic. <laughs> no, and that's good because we want to know, like if you, if you saw this on the website or something, mm -hmm. does it make sense? Can you follow it along? Yeah, and I think what's most helpful is, Day one, day 25, day two, I mean, it, it literally mm -hmm. tells you what day this little thing can happen yeah. on. So yeah. I find it easy to, to follow. I appreciate that. And I that also think publication. I hope people actually read it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know, me too. I think okay. more than anything, people read that. More than anything the BPU sends, people yeah. read that. that. Yeah. That's, that's what I found with this newsletter at yep. the was... People read that more than anything, more than he news or whatever. The one thing it was, a lot of times the post office would fold it and stick all the other mail inside of it. Right. Yeah. But you had to open it and look at it. That's right. Yeah, it's really nicely done. The only question I do have over it is <coughs> who is the following? Where would they go to find that information, or is there going to be a resource for them to be able to go and to know what those things are? That's an excellent question, something that we would want to put out there. So. Um, obviously, flex pay, I, I explained that so yes. you wouldn't have this. Um, if there's an insufficient fund um, that could um, lead to um, your disconnection coming sooner, because if you tried to make a payment that did not go through, then you haven't fulfilled whatever that obligation is. Same thing with like a terminated payment arrangement. So if you're on a payment arrangement and you don't make the payment that is needed, then that could create automatic disconnection and so it wouldn't follow the same timeline. But that's valid. So we need to we probably need to explain that somewhere like in the fine print below of, of what could occur with those situations. I would just want to know that because yes. No, that's a good point. And then also with educating them on that that's what this is and or not to do that. Right. Especially with the flex pay that's the option for someone and if they sure that, way, that may be something they can take on. Okay. Good feedback. Thank you. Anybody else on that? Uh, I have a question. Yeah. It's the uh, the bracket up here that says the first 30 days. Mm -hmm. The next one that says 60 days. Isn't that bracket for 60 days just go all the way back to number one, day one? Ah, oh, it's not, yeah. That's a good point, too. Is that what you're trying to indicate? Yep, yep. 60 days. So the bracket. Good call out. 60 days here. It's almost like first 30 days, second yeah. 30 oh, days. By 90 days before you cut me off. <laughs> gotcha. Valid point. Second 30 days. Yeah. I mean, it looks nice. The colors are good. Those, that's a good call out. This is good Great feedback. Point. Yeah. Because we want. Well, and this you know, is why these guys didn't want to. You know, they've been working on this and yeah. don't want to put this out there publicly. So this is actually a great um, great feedback and opportunity for, you know, actual customers to review this and see if it makes sense. So thank you for that. Yeah, that's like helpful. That. It does say 55 down here with the 60, but like you said, I was just thinking, I got to, you know. Yeah, I got it, well, it, it, it can be confusing when you're yeah. looking at it. So that's a good call out. Thank you. That's good. Yeah, if you guys see anything else, let us know because – we want this to be easy to understand, easy to visualize, with good information, but not like information overload. And I just wish somehow there was an opportunity here to say, okay, well, I mean, we have all this, but yeah, we're here, but, you know, contact, you know, do we have some, I mean, I know that's endless, but I just wish there was, so maybe it's a 211 or a yeah. 211 if you need help with you, so that should get them. Three one one through Wyandotte County and two one one through United Way. Mm -hmm. So maybe we could add like a link or some information on utility assistance. Yeah, that way I'm not saying we can't list everybody because Lord knows you can't keep up, but at least two one one three one one would give us our best shot to link into where the resources are. Yep. And they do they do um, audit that, and so I've gotten calls from three one one still doing this and periodically, so they they do a pretty good job on that. Excellent. Great. On the yellow portion, is there any way to 
to verify that the customer actually got the text and or the phone call? Um, there's not a way to verify that. I mean, that's where we would like to have the most up-to-date information as possible. Um, and text is tricky because, um, you know, if they do, if, if you get a text message and you do stop on that, we don't necessarily get notified that you stop those text messages. That's a carrier function, and so AT&T or Verizon or something would control that. Should, it will show up on your So does that, that mean your text would no longer go through? If, well. If they hit stop, if I hit stop. We I'm may off. not be notified that the text didn't go through because Verizon or AT&T is blocking that, right? We don't necessarily, we right. Text one yep, it's one-way communication, not two-way, yeah. So if, if BPU is texting you all of a sudden and you're like, stop, I don't want to hear from you, then you're telling your provider to stop allowing those text messages to go through. That stop will go all the way back to our message broker time. Oh, it will? On the okay. The only one that goes to your uh, carrier would be if you report it Okay, thank but do you. But do we get a list of folks that opt out? Uh, but anybody who says stop, that will come back to our message broker and should be added for them. Okay. And then do we remove them? Our message broker removes them. Yeah. Okay. Who do we use? Do you wait to separate? Uh, so for... Uh, Text power. Power. We use text power. When we deploy the new MyMeter portal, so our phone will send messages through the MyMeter portal. The customers can opt in if they wish to. Mm -hmm. They are currently not That's okay. They are getting ready to switch to Twilio because the service that they're currently using is no longer very well. Yep. Uh, okay. Also, when we make phone calls, do we use a one number, or do we use whatever number is available? You mean the BPU number? All numbers that are logged. They come from 9190, don't so they? It's the same number, but it's a bit line. So it's multiple lines going out. We, we can intercept the message. The reason I ask the question is uh, several people I talk to don't pick up calls if they don't recognize the number. I, yes. And I wouldn't care if it was one of these calls. If I didn't recognize the number, I would I would just simply either block it or you know move it on. Right. A lot of people do that. Uh, so if we're going to if we're going to make sure that we contact them either text or with a message, we need to make sure that they know that it's a BPU number somehow. Okay. Like if you've been a BPU customer for as long as a lot of us have, and you don't know that five seven three is coming from downtown, like I don't know how else we can teach people. That. But that's also City Hall's number two. That's what I'm saying. I mean, it's coming from downtown, right? It's either coming from y'all or it's coming from us. So, Rob, what happens? We were talking about the trying to get people to understand this. No, I got you. I got you. And maybe, maybe we just put the number on. Hey, you'll be getting it from this number or whatever. So we send outbound calls for a number of different reasons. We'll we'll send them for this reason. We'll send them for we're going to be working in your area. We'll send them for we're going to disrupt your service tomorrow for maintenance or whatever like that. So when we do that and, and say we load a call from the SDC, when it comes through to the customer, does it appear as the same number as if this call is happening? I believe that all the IVR calls go out to the Nellcom IVR, which is the campaign driver that we use for those calls. Um, I believe they all have the customer service as a callback number that it's coming from. Uh, even though it's truly coming from the mill company. So I guess that's to help to Steve's point is I hope we're at least calling out the same number yeah. all the time yeah. and that number that shows up as 573-whatever, is there any other nomenclature assigned to it for the for the um, caller ID or does it just say nothing? It's a BPU. Okay, okay. so okay. there you go. Um, but whether you sign up for and understand it technology person sponsor. Uh, you sign up for mail, you sign up for text messages, you sign up for phone calls, you sign up for any kind of communication. I can transmit the communication. You cannot receive it for you. Yeah. No. So you have to answer the phone, you have to respond to the text message, you have to open your mail, you have to read the newsletter. You don't do any of those things, nothing I do is ever going to get across the desk. Uh, 
That's right. What else on the on this? Anything? Michelle, you have anything? We do have a phone number on there with someone to the point earlier. Will someone answer that phone? We do have a phone number on you. Oh, is CPU answering all calls now, or is it going to a call center, or what's happening now in real time? So we ha we answer the calls here. We do have an IVR, um, and and so if now if you call after hours, obviously right. nobody. But we have an IVR system, and then there's options in there where you can speak to a person if you don't want to self service or unable to self service in the IVR. Yeah. We're actually looking for a new, I, we're, we're working on a new IVR system that's going to provide additional functionality, um, better call routing, some um, transaction survey options, a lot of functionality that we don't have today. Are you going to, I mean, are you guys thinking about it at some point um, when it's the lobby? I just remember when we first started these meetings, it was a person trying to figure out that system out there. And I was like, I can't, you know, I didn't want to help because I didn't want to be, you know, privy to send the wrong information. But there was no one to help them. It was in the little system, little kiosk in the lobby. Yes. And so are you going to open, are, are you going to, at some point, are you going to have live people or you got started that? So, so we have two options. One, with the kiosk, if there's an issue, we actually have a camera mm -hmm. that somebody can help and assist with that. And so that way if they're stuck and need some assistance, we have that option. You can make an appointment. But is that in. after hours, though? Because I think we, it would have been one of these meetings, so it would have been like around, you know, like around six. Yeah, it, it's not. I mean, it's not after hours. Till uh, your last reps here. Till yeah, six. till six. Okay. Um, and then you can make an appointment to come in and actually talk to a person. Um, so, like, if you're starting service, if you have a question about your bill or something like that. So we've gone to. Um, in-person lobby appointments, and you can either call and make an appointment, or you can go online and set those appointments. Um, and we're looking at expanding that. Right now, you can do Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We're going to um, expand those to Monday through Friday. So we're just trying to get the staffing worked out with that. Yeah. Hopefully, that will be some help too for the folks that are that are kind of not. Yeah. So if they want to come, that thing. Yeah. I mean, I've been in here, and I know that place has been booming. Yeah. Well, the, the thing with the appointments is, you know, if, if you get a specific time. So if you need to come over lunch or break or something like that, that is your dedicated time. You don't have to come out. You, you're not coming here and waiting. You're not having to have to wait 45 minutes, an hour and a half, because there's a room full of people. Um, and so you have that dedicated time, and that's your time slot that you get. I like the fact that the camera, I like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's something that that's new because a lot of a lot of people would have questions or or anything, and the security guard isn't equipped to handle those. So. Right. Yep. Yeah. Good question. Absolutely. I, I really appreciate the the conversation around this. It's very helpful. Fantastic. Anything else on this? I know we've gone way over tonight. Right. That's okay. Phone number, website, anything that can kind of let people, you know, you can always, right. everything go along with mm -hmm. that, sharing and where they can go. Because there's a lot of stuff online if they do want to go online. Right. And that's what we're hoping to put this information with a lot of your feedback online. So that way people can see that and understand. Um, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Use it as a resource. I should know this. Were you here when we had the, the, um, assistance groups come in that day for the meeting. Did you come to that meeting? I don't think so. Because I thought what one of the things Jeanette was going to do was create just an aggregation of all those resources and put them somewhere, oh. have them somewhere. Okay. So, so maybe that's the link. Yeah. Um, A resource to the page. List of, yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's just that they change so much or whatever, but it, that's why I was saying at least if we had 211 and 311, they should mm -hmm. be privy to all of the links. They should be privy to every service, mm -hmm. or pretty much all of the services in real time. I do have a praise report. Can I say that real quick? Yes. <laughs> so um, a friend of mine was house-sitting at my house and, so, and called BPU um, to come out to get some trees or whatever. They came out. Well, I have a few trees, but they came in one section, and those tree, trees were not, I guess, messing with the wires or whatever. So I said, you picked the wrong tree. I said, you picked the wrong tree. So I said, call them back and say you need those trees. Called them back, came back out again, and, and took, care of them, took care of those trees. 
Excellent. And in real time, I mean, it was pretty quick. I mean, like within, I mean, I mean, I think from call to coming out, I want to say like days, hours. I mean, it was pretty darn quick. I mean, I mean, it must have just been a perfect, the perfect storm or whatever. They were just ready and available. But yeah, but I wanted our, to share our, that. Our vegetation management folks, thank you for that. They'll, I will let them know. But yeah, please. So we have two know. different, two different vendors here in town. Yes. Uh, and. So when you see the, the trucks that say right, um, they're just doing circuit trimming for us on a bid um, price, and they have their schedule for the year, and that's all they're here doing unless we have a storm. We can, we can stop that, and we can put them in to help us with storm restoration. The Aspen folks that you see in the orange trucks, they do the same thing, but they also do our, um, we call it trouble work like that, right? Somebody's having trouble, there's some trouble on the system, hot spotting, those kinds of things. And so they do have a couple of dedicated folks that we're able to, same day when we get yeah, it something, was can you go take a peek at this? And they run right over, knock oh, on the door, it. leave a door knocker, take care of whatever they're going to do, and they and they get a schedule. Yeah, I mean, they literally came out, Did I was like, oh, they'll probably come back. They know. Came out, got it done, and left. Excellent job. Thank you for letting us know that, for real. Mm -hmm. No, really. I mean, like, I know. I see it on both sides now. I'm going to give them praise when they need to have praise. You know, and we're going we're gonna to make it right and help them have fun. And just do it all right. But, yeah, they did a good job. All right. So the last the last item on the agenda, and it's going to be really quick, is and I talked to you guys a little bit earlier about <clears throat> the year-long um, revision that we've done to the customer service policies. Um, you know, they're going to look really similar to how they are today, I mean, just in form. Um, but the policy committee and the staff um, has really tried to be very intentional about transforming these policies. So uh, they are, um, I'll just say, <clears throat> they're less, uh, original BPU and they're we're the kinder, friendlier BPU that you know we realize you are our customers. So we've tried to make this you know these customer friendly um, to the extent that we can. You know, got to have the policies in place. Everybody knows that. But a couple of things I wanted to highlight um, and things that we have heard over and over again. Um, you know, we always hear about deposits and. Um, Various various issues surrounding deposits, and so the first thing that the staff did on its own initiative in changing sort of you know uh, taking us into the new era, I guess, is so that if you've got an applicant with zero credit history, or obviously you've got an applicant with you know has not been deemed a credit risk, which we use a third party credit rating agency um, to do that, it's a zero deposit. So residential customer. Nothing. Zero deposit. That's new. It is new. Uh -huh. okay. It's new. All right. Good. Brand new. <laughs> and then, like I said, I mean, I, I, I would love to, you know, for the, for the board, the policy committee to take um, credit, credit for it, but we can't because the staff came up with it on its own. And uh, very pretty. The staff has been doing it for years. Pardon? If you, if you have a good credit here, you don't have a bad thing, you, they turn you on, you don't have any problems with BPU, I don't care what your credit was. When you came in there, you had to pay that deposit. We are trying to be yeah. more customer friendly. I'm just saying. I'm no, I, I I hear you. No, I do. I, I do. That, it is the truth. We're trying to do. We're trying to be easier to do business with. Yes. And it was, um, and it, was it was the time the timing. The, the, the policy hadn't been updated in a while. <laughs> so when it came time, they well. And if you knew, <laughs> and if you knew the work and the time that they put in to update the policy. Uh, you probably would say maybe you should have put that off another five years, but 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 they, <laughs> no, they took no. it wasn't updated in circa 2009. I know that. <laughs> well, and, and so when I first came to the board in 2020, um, the 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 board was undergoing some policy updates, right? And I honestly don't know, and Norm, you can probably speak to this, whether or not that was staff initiated or board initiated. Um, but it wasn't a comprehensive review, as I recall, um, of the entire document from beginning to end. And despite, um, well, I know that the staff was tired of me 
because I actually made them do it from start to finish. That's what lawyers do, though. And well, that is what lawyers <laughs> right. do. That's what but, well, I, I do think, though, you know, I've been able to observe a lot of that process in 2020 and in 2024. Mm -hmm. uh, but I will say the team worked hard, uh, but don't let Rose sit here and tell you that she didn't do anything. Like she, she kept the fire stoked. She did the bulk of of the lifting, and and not not only that, Rob Camp, uh, oh. who <laughs> has right. nothing to do with the customer service department or the customer service. Uh, all of it. You know, both of them played it, played a major role there, and you know, I I'll be honest, and it's. It's probably not the most uh, popular comment to make uh, amongst my peers here, but we've got a lot of legacy employees. And sometimes they just like what they're doing and how they're doing it, right? And so sometimes you have to have some different faces come along, some people with some different experiences to just sort of remind you that there's other ways of doing things. And I know I alluded to that earlier when I was – um, talking about Abby and, and Amber, but you know, it's it's necessary, it's needed, and at the end of the day, it's it's refreshing when it's done. And Jeremy is right; it it would not have gotten done without Rose. She was instrumental in leading it and making sure that it got done 100%. Thank you. Thank you. She did. <laughs> Okay, this is this is not a this is it just had to be done, right? Because no. because we sit here, I mean, you know, uh, everybody in this community, I mean, we're customers too, mm -hmm. right? I mean, and, and I question, and, so I, you know, I question it. I'm absolutely, like, I don't have never had a, a late bill at BPU. I've never done this, this, and this, and that, and I still got to pay a deposit. Right. Yeah. But right. when I bought my house in in 2009, sure enough, I had to I had to put a deposit down, and never had a history, never had any problems with BPU ever. But you got it back. Did I? You should have. You should have. Because you know I've asked that like ten times. I've asked that like ten times. I'm like, hmm. I get it back. I don't. You should have. You should. No, for real. Because like I, I don't know. We've been customers for. Right. You know. I don't know. I'm like, I need to hold my bills and I get it. <laughs> All right, so the, so the other thing with deposits is, and the other thing we hear is like, you know, so if you've got a customer that, um, you know, unfortunately a deposit does apply to their account, you know, because of the credit risk associated with it. Um, we, up until, as soon as we get this passed, hopefully in the next board meeting, um, customers had to pay that deposit on the first bill. And sometimes that's $275 in addition to your initiation fee, in addition to, in addition to, in addition to, right? And so um, we have, we so we're breaking that deposit up over, if a, if a customer chooses to, they can pay it on the first bill if they want, or they can uh, uh, spread it out over the first three months of, of billing, and so to help sort of um, ease that burden as well. Um, so that was big. It was huge. Um, we went back and forth. We had many spirited discussions on this, and um, lo and behold, we, we got to a resolution on that one. Um, <clears throat> a couple other uh, things that, that we're doing. Um, so what we've heard from a lot of people or what we've heard from people over time is, you know, there's I have an outstanding debt. I didn't know I had an outstanding debt with BPU, right? Um, I've been a customer now for 10 years, but I didn't know I had an outstanding debt out there because it's never caught, right? And so what, we're, what we've done, and this is just a very recent, at the very end of what we, uh, the revisions that we did, uh, we got folks to agree to, um, if, if, if you have that outstanding debt when you apply for service, you can either choose to pay it up front um, or you can pay it on a payment arrangement over six months, right? You've got to pay one-sixth of that up front, but you can pay it over time. It's not like you've got to pay it or we can't serve you. So that's, that's one thing. And then the other is if you're an existing customer, um, if that debt was not found within 180 days of you becoming a customer, that debt's not going to be applied to you. Now, there are two exceptions to that. Fraud, <laughs> you, if you perpetrate fraud, or diversion, right. so you, you know, have utilized the services um, without authorization. Is that a good way to say we call, that? Yeah, we call theft a service diversion. So fraud or theft, right? Those, so those are two exceptions. But 
I mean, those are those are really big improvements to this policy um, and these policies that um, I can just tell you, you know, again, I've not been on the board very long, but that's something I've heard. I know it's something other board members hear all the time. And are there more things we could do? I've had one customer sort of repeatedly come at me and, and say, look, why can't I make a payment arrangement, you know, the day that I'm to be disconnected? Well, you know, we've got technical issues with that. I mean, if it's, been, if it's scheduled for a disconnection, it's scheduled for a disconnection. We can't get around that and, like, you know, manually intervene in that at that point, unfortunately. And so this is why it's so important for when cu customers understand the flow, make your payment arrangement here, not here. And I felt terrible for it. It's a single mother who's, you know, she was just doing the best she could, right? Wound up, you know, coming up with the money, but she's like, we got to be able to have that. Well, that's something we couldn't accommodate. We just can't accommodate it. And I will tell you that we, we pressed staff very, very hard for a year's time. And I'm going to tell you, they're a resilient bunch because they could come up with an example of anything, <laughs> anything under the sun, unfortunately. Yeah. And... I'm sure that's true of most utilities because okay. I know, Abby, you came in during the process and yeah. you had a different viewpoint of it, and you're like, yep, people do that stuff all the time. And I'm like, really? It's not unique to BPU. Yeah, yeah. and so, so and, and that was refreshing, you know, to be like, okay, all right, we're not the weird ones here, BPU. No. We, this really does happen in the utility industry. So those are just a couple of things I wanted to highlight about that, but just um, look for those, uh, hopeful, hopefully, Middle of November, those will be live, new on the website. Um, I'm sure we'll do a big press release about, I'm kidding, we won't, or don't you dare. <laughs> like, if you want me to. <laughs> no, we just maybe just a kind of ribbon. Logo. Ribbon cutting. <laughs> yes, we'll do a ribbon cutting. But anyway, so those, those, are, those are things that we were able to accomplish over the last year, and really, I, I'm really excited about those to be unveiled because, I think that the way that um, our folks, because they were had such a, they were integral, such an integral part of the process. You know, our customer service folks, our frontline folks, our management folks, and those, they could tell us everything worked. But we were able to sit there and kind of push back on them. And here's here's why we don't think that works for our customers, right? And they adopted it and they they embraced it. And so, um, kinder, gentler, friendlier BPU. That's what we're going for. Don't know if we're going to get there, but that's what we're going for. We are. Baby steps. I like that. I like that. So, um, but that's it on that. So that's good to have feedback from customers to know, you know, what their needs are and yeah. how we can best serve. Yes. Oh. Then you can kind of have that balance because you need to know what they're hearing on one end and then what's really happening out there real time. I think this is a nice compromise, especially for folks that are out there just – but they pay their bills on time, do not have a problem or whatever to have to come up with a deposit. And I think they were doing some of that, like you spread it out over like a couple of months or whatever. You didn't have to actually pay it all the way up. I think I, I received an option. I think I had over like a bill or two. Wow. I, did, I, didn't, I didn't know that that was a thing. It wasn't in the policy. Yeah, I don't, uh, you had 30 yeah. days. Yeah I, yeah. Did, yeah. I had a little bit of time because I don't remember having to pay all of it. At that, but I, I remember I had to pause it, I think, but, I, you know. But like you said, it's okay, like Mike's saying, is you have the money to do it, but you don't have the money to do it. Right. That's right. Uh, and then you're getting right. all these turn on be all these, you know, you look at that. That's a big chunk. Well, and that's the thing. And, and there's, you know, there's a, um, I think if you sign up for auto pay or bank draft or something like that, after a certain period of time, you can have the service initiation fee, which is $75. You can have that credited back to your account. I mean, there's some things like that that are in there as well that, you know, are minor, but they're they're important and they're major and, um, you know, to, to customers who struggle with their bills. Well, and just making them aware of it. I just had a group, our spot, young adults, and last week, and, you know, and I did a move out or whatever, and that was one of the things I really emphasized. Hey, you know, you need to check if you're going to be on the Kansas, because some of them are going to be on the Kansas side, some of them on the Missouri side. I'm like, hey, these are the things you need to look for. You need to call those companies. You need to find out what your deposit is going to be. You need to know what those, those costs are going to be before, because they, they have no, and these are, they're like 16 to 24, kind of that job form model yep. with this group, and just helping them understand, you think you're ready to move out, but are you really ready to move out? So I really emphasize, like, are you ready? And like, well, like I, I, it was 20 of them. Like four of them are going to be moving out in the next month or two. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, this is what you need to be doing your research on. Because you need this amount of money yep. in real time so that you can start out good. So, yeah. 
we're just trying to help them understand that process. And a lot well, of people don't. If you're if it's your first time on your own, right? You're not gonna think about these as positive. You're just thinking, just trying to get your apartment. You're not thinking right. all these other things. So absolutely. Well, but to your point, and Kitty, you make this point all the time. Is you know, and really all of you guys do. The more we can educate, mm-hmm. you know, the better off it's going to be, right? And it's one thing for us to sit here and and tell you guys these things, right, because you guys are actively engaged and actively participating. It's quite another for, you know, just BPU customers that sort of tangentially pay attention and don't. Um, BPU Connection is a great way to get information out to folks, but, you know, we're, we're reaching all kinds of age groups and demographics, and, you know, and then I know BPU does everything it can to reach every demographic it serves. Um, but as always, we all know we can be better. And and I think that that is, you know, that is, I, I think that's an emphasis right now of the BPU staff. And, um, you know, the more outside eyes we bring into this, um, better off we're all gonna be in the end. So I think that's what the what the hope is anyway. And, and just make sure that if, if we, I know we can't get everyone, but the champions, you know, the churches, the people that have pantries, folks that are already out in the community that they're already trusting, if they're seeing the same message, have you checked into this? Have you checked into that? Because they're going to share. And I know, you know, Pastor Wakes is that he has a church, so I'm sure he got people coming in there needing this, needing that. So he's equipped with saying you can go here, here, and there. So, again, he's have some people, people sign up for lease now. Right. Oh, heard yeah. Heard. Pastor himself is. <laughs> oh, yeah, send them down to, to uh, your house. <laughs> <laughs> Not too far away, right? We'll sit on the porch and get all done. But, you know, I'm just saying, but making sure the champions know the church, the different groups, the neighborhood groups, um, that can really help make a difference and help, and help make an impact. Yeah. So where are, wherever they are, just really helping. I think we just, BPU needs to, I'm glad that you guys are bringing this approach, but you also need to get some more champions. I am. Uh, let start with the ambassadors, but we need more champions. I, 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 um, I needed assistance twice with my BPU bill. Um, years ago when I was in Kansas City and I went to Metro Lutheran the ministries ministries yeah and when I went the first time uh you know it, it, it seemed kind of cumbersome but you know knowing the time to go and mm-hmm. uh but I found out who to contact them and so they were very uh good about helping then when I went back the second time it's like they knew me. They said, "Oh yeah, we know you," because <laughs> you see, last year or the year before last, you, you came, and they quickly. I mean, it's just like almost instantly they took care of me, you know. And, uh, and so they just needed some documentation. I showed them all the documentation. They, but it was it was it was really good good to see see that that you know, available in the community. Uh, and I said, "What you know?" Uh, so to hear that there is money still available and people are not. Right. That, that's 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 you know, yeah. some, that's some right. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> I know I needed it one time. I said, you know, uh, so I I don't you know. Uh, it's, it's it's interesting to uh, to to know that uh, we have funds available. And I don't know whatever whatever suggestions. I'm sure we'll 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 take it to heart and whatever uh, you can do to 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 help us to get where more people are being served. That'd be a plus. Like he, like it could be a seasonal thing where we're not there yet, but we're getting ready to approach that moment in, in history where a lot of need is there. But I'm sure that United Way could probably also tell us, you know, what their trends are yeah. during the winter months. So, well, I think we've um, I think we've concluded our agenda. Do you have anything else? You know, I heard everyone speak. I don't think I heard you. Speak. Did, I, did you say anything? <laughs> we were talking Someone over you. I don't want to. I don't want to. To. Yeah. to I want to make sure that you got a chance to get your concerns. I heard it all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Bless you. Thank you for your presence. There's a lot of a lot of issues out there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. A lot of issues. There. Thank you all for your. Presence tonight. Thank you. I uh, late. I uh, forgot about the meet. I my phone broke. Oh, I couldn't, no. couldn't, 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 couldn't work it. So I took it straight to the shop. <laughs> so now it has a screen on. But I still now my still got six months. Okay.
covered over there. <laughs> now, Stevie, I, I can't, I, I can't lead both you and David around. Come on. Hey, bro. hey, hey. You're never late. You're never late. Yeah. Hey, you're never late. So. Yeah, for me to be late, you know something's up. All right, Rob, I think we can adjourn.